All right, in this video, uh, we are actually going to decommission a control tower landing zone. Now, I haven't actually done this before, so we are going to kind of do this for the first time today to see uh, what actually happens, you know, what gets removed, what does the account state look like after this is, process is done. Um, so we kind of know what happens if we want to ever remove the control tower service, its guardrails and, you know, software from our environment. So uh, I'm gonna actually in my SSO page for my control tower environment, um, we see I still have my audit account, my log archive account, uh, random sandbox testing account, and I'm gonna log into my workshop account, which is my actual master account. And I'm gonna go in here and log in with administrator access to my management console. I'm inside the North Virginia region, which is my home region for control tower. And I'm gonna go into my control tower service. I have it here on my recently visited page, but if you don't have it there, uh, you can simply search for it in our search pane, go to the control tower page. And once it loads up, we start with our dashboard, got everything here. And now what we want to do is we want to decommission uh, the landing zone. So if we go to the landing zone uh, settings on the left side, uh, we see we have this option here at the end. We got versions, we got regions, we got configurations, and we have decommission. So when I go to decommission, we have the option to decommission the landing zone. So like I said, we're gonna do this for the first time uh, ever. Uh, I'm gonna see what happens here and uh, we're gonna see what kind of options we have and what the landing zone looks like after this is done. So we'll click on decommission. We see that we're gonna uninstall resources that AWS Control Tower installed. So any necessary steps to remove VPCs like those custom control tower VPCs. Um, and, uh, but control tower itself does not actually uninstall those VPCs. Oh, that's good to know. Or SSO. So it sounds like control tower will just be removed. Any of those VPCs that may be control tower created. Um, if you're potentially using those, uh, control tower is not actually going to remove those VPCs. So that's a good sign. Um, we are leaving AWS organizations intact. So that means any OUs that were created, although Control Tower was managing those OU creations and management, um, we are, should still see the OUs exist and the organization still there because um, Control Tower is not actually going to remove those, which makes sense considering we still have the accounts. Um, Control Tower should uninstall resources and installed. So this means we should see like S3 buckets removed. We should see CloudTrail resources removed, things like that. AWS Control Tower is not going to alter any VPCs or the accounts or any resources within them. That's pretty good. That should be okay. And we're going to leave organizations intact. So we should still see our organization, still see our accounts, and potentially our OUs um, there. So now we're going to hit decommission, all caps, into the um, text field here. And we're going to click decommission landing zone. Now this process is probably gonna take two hours. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pause this video and we'll come back to see what the uh, landing zone looks like after this decommission process is successful. All right, so our process has finished. Uh, we now have a decommissioned landing zone. I'm still in my master account. So we're gonna actually just take a quick look around based on what we saw in the acknowledgements. I'm gonna to go to our organizations service and we're gonna take a look at what's still there. Um, we can see organization is still on. We can still see we have our OU structure. So we still have our sandbox, we're testing. We still have our two audit and log archive accounts. Those were not deleted, they're still there, okay? And we'll also check out our IAM Identity Center to see what configurations were made there. Um, if we recall from uh, the initialization of Control Tower, we actually get some Control Tower uh, groups, uh, names uh, that are created uh, in order to help us with organizing access to the accounts. Um, so we're going to check here. Let's go look at our users. Um, we still have my two workshop users that I've created. And if I go to groups, um, the control tower admin groups is still there. Account finder is still there. So it didn't delete any of those from us. So that's good. That means we wouldn't lose any access to any of our accounts if we leverage these groups and permission sets for our accounts. Um, you know, and all of a sudden have a bunch of users um, logged out or have any issues. Um, uh, with access in the accounts that we're potentially using uh, these group names um, for assigning access to a bunch of users. So that's good. Um, let's confirm the VPCs. If we go to VPC here, uh, we're gonna take a look at the VPC console um, and we should see um, that we still have our default VPC here. So um, this Northeast Virginia region, we did not delete the default VPC after installing our landing zone. Um, and we can see even though Control Tower went away, it didn't touch the VPC uh, in this region. Um, that should be the case for the Oregon region as well. 
and it is. Um, I'm going to assume the other regions still have their VPCs, but this is another good check uh, to verify that based on the acknowledgements, no VPCs would be altered or uninstalled by Control Tower being decommissioned. So you can rest assured that if you have a big environment, lots of VPCs, uh, that the Control Tower would not touch those um, if you decide to decommission that service for any reason. So now, what we're going to do is we're going to jump into uh, the Log Archive account to see um, if any of those resources were deleted um, from uh, the control tower decommissioning. Um, so in log archive, we do get an S3 bucket. This is what's gonna store those logs from control tower. Um, so let's take a look at S3 inside our North Virginia region and see if it actually removed anything. Um, and we can see that we still have our control tower logs. We still have our S3 access logs. Um, so it did not delete these. Um, so maybe a little bit of a misnomer of the uninstalled resources. Uh, it must be more for any additional resources that Control Tower has for management, like guardrails and things like that. Um, it also makes sense because you can't easily delete a bucket without deleting what's inside the bucket. Um, but this is actually a positive thing to see because we don't want to have logs that we were gathering over its lifespan to all of a sudden get deleted. Um, that could be an issue for an audit and compliance control standpoint. So uh, this is good. Um, we can see here, if we click in here, um, we still have logs uh, from our history, um, which is good. So we can expect that even though Control Tower says it's going to uninstall resources, it actually does not delete things like its audit log buckets and things like that. Okay. All right. And then we'll just do a quick check on the audit account. Um, we can take a look at uh, config. Um, it is expected um, that Control Tower wouldn't touch these because these aren't necessarily uh, uh, resource installs. Uh, they're more like service enablements. So things like AWS config, or if you later on decide to turn on security services like guard duty and security hub, um, that is not going to be a issue. So we'll go to config, take a look here. And we'll see um, that actually we do have this um, in its base state, which is good. It wasn't changed, wasn't turned on, wasn't turned off. Um, for config, even though we have the aggregators, you still have to turn this on after you turn on control tower, okay? So control tower did not edit this on, did not edit this off. This is just at its stable state. So if you were to turn on config after deploying control tower, this would not get disabled um, by control tower when you decommission, okay? So that looks like for the first time decommissioning uh, control tower, um, we still have access through SSO. Our groups are not removed. VPCs were not uninstalled. Um, although we did get a note that resources were gonna be uh, deleted that were controlled or created by Control Tower. Things like the S3 buckets for Log Archive were not deleted, which was good for retention. Um, and the states for the other accounts like Audit, our testing account and such um, are the same. We still have our OUs. We still have our, our organizational units inside organizations. Um, we still have these accounts. Um, but bear in mind, they are not being governed by control tower anymore. So we're not going to have those guardrails. We're not going to have that kind of control tower monitoring. We're also not going to have the ability to vend accounts through account factory. We now have to use an alternate process to do that. Um, so make sure to take all that into account if you're going to decommission control tower. All right. So that is the end of this demo. Um, if you have any questions, comments, concerns, complaints, please leave them below and we'll see you next time.